both public and private institutions of higher learning right now are facing tremendous financial problems. What are we going to do if the colleges and universities aren't going to find themselves serving elites, either financial elites who can afford the tuition at the colleges or the universities, or uh, intellectual elites who qualify for the limited number of scholarship funds available? Let me say, first of all, that I think the colleges and universities must not confine themselves to serving uh, the elites, uh, either the uh, intellectual elite or the uh, uh, people who are wealthy. We must find ways of maintaining uh, open institutions that permit students uh, who have the intellectual qualifications to go as far as they can go. I feel this very strongly. I also think it important that our colleges and universities need to uh, make known uh, their financial problems and uh, once they are adequately understood that there will be responses to help them meet these problems. I think, too, they've got to be more prudent uh, in their management of their own affairs, more make sure that they are practicing all the economies, that their investment policies are yielding the return uh, by sound and careful investments, uh, and that uh, we steadily build the resources of these institutions. You talk about making the public aware of the problem. Can the public adequately take care of the problem itself, or is it the federal government inevitably? Well, the federal government is affected by the public, too. And I think the kind of thing that the Carnegie Commission on Higher Education is doing now and the series of reports that are being published uh, will certainly help. This, this book that's come out recently on the depression in higher education is an example of a, an effective analysis of reaching the public. The report on philanthropy of the uh, uh, commission that was headed by Peter Peterson in Chicago uh, recently uh, has been another effective document in which they uh, stress the fact that uh, we face a uh, multi-billion dollar deficit in uh, the support of our philanthropic institutions of all kinds in this country. Some of this comes about because changes in the tax laws have made it uh, more difficult or have encouraged giving. Some of it comes about because of inflation. Some of it comes about because, uh, as I say, the there's an inadequate understanding of the importance of, uh, of public service institutions, of which the universities is uh, one category. In addition to the uh, demands on public funds that are coming from higher education, we're also seeing those requests or demands being made from public education, public television, rather. You headed the Carnegie Commission report on yeah. public television, which was responsible for the formation of the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. Would you say that today public television is being adequately financed? No, Do we have not. enough money? to adequately use all the talent that's available? We certainly do not. Uh, and I think one of the central problems that we still face in public television is adequate federal support uh, to go to the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and uh, adequate federal support to go to the local stations for improving their equipment and their individual strength. There has been a very heartening growth in the uh, community support of public television from private sources and from the states, too. Uh, but uh, the federal financing problem uh, has not yet been adequately solved. Uh, this year, the uh, Congress appropriated uh, 20 plus million dollars for uh, the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. Uh, I think ultimately this ought to be much larger than that, uh, and it ought to be uh, made, it, made available on a basis that there can be no political control of the funds that are made available. This is fundamentally important.